Hello all, welcome to part 2 of the second lecture on switched mode power converters. In this presentation, we will be completing the remaining part of fifth module. The topics being covered are programmed or selective harmonic elimination, current control voltage source inverter, based mainly hysteresis current control. Before we move on to selective harmonic elimination scheme, I will just give a review of the square wave operation of a full bridge inverter. This topic was already covered in class. So consider a single phase full bridge inverter with the source voltage VDC and the load voltage V0. The load current is I0. The switching pulses given to the four switches has been shown here. So from that we can see the switches S1 and S2 conducts from 0 to pi that is half the time period from pi to 2 pi s3 and s4 is turned on s1 and s2 is turned off based on this switching scheme the output voltage obtained is also given so from 0 to pi since s1 and s2 is on the load voltage is plus vdc and from pi to 2 pi s3 and s4 is on so the load voltage switches to minus vdc and the Fourier analysis of this waveform was already carried out in class and we had obtained the amplitude of the nth harmonic of this output voltage to be 4 VDC by n pi where n is the order of the harmonic. So the amplitude of the fundamental component that is with n equal to 1 substituting n equal to 1 we get the amplitude of the fundamental component as V1 equal to 4 VDC by pi. So till here we have already seen in class. Now we move on to selective harmonic elimination scheme. If you look at the waveform of the output voltage of the square wave full bridge inverter, it is a square waveform and not a sinusoidal one. That means it has harmonics. So these harmonics must be eliminated before you feed this output voltage to the load. So selective harmonic elimination is a method by which you can control the magnitude of this output voltage as well as eliminate unwanted harmonics. The output voltage can be controlled by modifying the switching scheme. If you look at the switching pulse waveform for S1 and S2, it is delayed by an angle alpha that is instead of turning them on at 0 degree the switches S1 and S2 are turned on at after alpha degree similarly they are also turned off not at pi but alpha degree before pi the same modification is applied for S3 and S4 instead of turning them on at pi the switches are turned on after a delay of alpha degree from pi Similarly, they are not turned off at 2 pi, instead they are turned off earlier by an angle alpha from 2 pi. So using this switching scheme, this will be reflected in the output voltage waveform. So from 0 to alpha, all the switches are off, therefore the output voltage will be 0. From alpha to pi minus alpha, switches S1 and S2 are on. So the output voltage will be VDC. At this point, that is at pi minus alpha, S1, S2 is turned off. Therefore, the voltage again comes back to zero. Again till pi, since all the switches are off, the voltage is zero. Now the same concept can be applied and based on the switching of S3 and S4, the output voltage will be minus VDC but delayed by an angle alpha. So now you can see compared to the previous waveform the voltage waveform has been changed. There are some intervals of zero also in between the voltage waveform. So therefore the output voltage can be controlled by adjusting this interval alpha on each side of the pulse. So during alpha the output voltage will be zero. Now if you analyze this waveform the Fourier series of this voltage is V0 of t is equal to sigma n odd Vn sin n omega t. So this expression is obtained based on the symmetry of this waveform. So we are considering only the odd harmonics. Now due to half wave symmetry, 
the magnitude of the nth harmonic of this voltage vn will be equal to 2 by pi integral you can see the waveform is present from alpha to pi minus alpha so integral alpha to pi minus alpha the value of the waveform is vdc so vdc sin n omega t d omega t on performing the integration you get the value as 4 vdc by n pi cos n alpha so compared to the square wave operation we saw earlier an additional term cos n alpha has also appeared in this so this is the magnitude of the nth harmonic of the output voltage so the amplitude of the fundamental frequency component of the output voltage that is with n equal to 1 i get it as v1 is equal to 4 vdc by pi cos alpha substitute n equal to 1 now this scheme is so called that is selective harmonic elimination because from the output voltage the desired harmonic can be eliminated by properly fixing the value of alpha so if i want to remove the third harmonic choose the value of alpha in such a way that this cos alpha term will become zero so that the magnitude of that harmonic will be zero so for example if i am setting the value of alpha equal to 30 so the magnitude of the third harmonic voltage that is substituting n equal to 3 I get V3 equal to 4 VDC by 3 pi cos 3 into 30 which is cos 90 so that will be 0. So therefore the third harmonic can be eliminated by setting alpha equal to 30. So in general to eliminate the nth harmonic choose the value of alpha as 90 by n. So this method that is selective harmonic elimination is also a method to control the magnitude of the output voltage. But the drawback of this method is that once you fix the value of alpha, it also fixes the magnitude of the output voltage. That is further control of magnitude of output voltage cannot be done. For example, if I am setting the value of alpha as 30 so that I can eliminate the third harmonic. <coughs> Since alpha is 30, now the magnitude of the fundamental component that is with n equal to 1, I get it as V1 as 1.1 VDC. So the output voltage magnitude is fixed to 1.1 VDC. I cannot change it. So that is the drawback of this method. So if I want to control both the amplitude of the output voltage as well as eliminate the harmonics using this same switching scheme, the input voltage, the DC input voltage given to the inverter itself must be controllable. That is VDC must be controllable. So to control the input to the inverter, the method I can use is place a DC-DC converter between the DC source and the inverter. So that by controlling the uh, duty ratio of the DC-DC convert, converter switches, I can control the output voltage. So the DC-DC converter can be any one which we have already studied. It can be a boost, buck boost or a buck converter. Any one so that the output VDC can be varied. So in that way I can control the magnitude of the output voltage as well as control the harmonics. The switching schemes which we saw till now is used to control the output voltage of the inverter. But for certain applications like some DC and AC motor drives, the current needs to be controlled. The output current of the inverter which is going to the motor needs to be controlled. So there are several schemes available for current control. Two of the commonly used methods are hysteresis band or tolerance band control and fixed frequency control. So here we will be seeing the hysteresis band control in detail. Before we move on to hysteresis band control, I'll just give a small review of the basic working in a three-phase inverter. So consider this three-phase inverter. Now consider phase A. When the upper switch SA plus is turned on, the point A gets connected to the positive terminal of VDC. So therefore the voltage VAN, VAN means voltage or potential difference between point A and N will be plus VDC because point A is connected to positive terminal of 
the source and the point n is at the negative terminal so therefore v a n will be v d c now if s a minus that is the lower switch of phase a is turned on the point a gets connected to the negative terminal or the point a and the point n is same now so therefore v a n will be zero there is no potential difference between point a and n the same case is applicable for phase b if the upper switch is on v b n will be plus v d c if the lower switch s b minus is turned on v b n will be zero similarly for phase c if s c plus is on v c n is v d c and if s c minus is turned on v c n will be zero in hysteresis band control there will be a reference current consider for phase a i a star is the reference current which is the desired waveform of the motor current then we have a tolerance band tolerance band is actually an upper and lower limit of the phase current that is the actual current should not cross this limit it should not cross the upper or lower limit it should be maintained within this tolerance band so tolerance band will be predefined in the method what we do is the actual current ia if it tries to go beyond the upper tolerance band the lower switch sa minus is turned on so the phase voltage van will be zero since van is zero the current has a tendency to decrease so it comes back into the tolerance band similarly if the current has a tendency to go lower than the to to lower tolerance band the upper switch is turned on so that van is plus vdc and the current will again increase so that it is maintained within the tolerance band limit so the same approach is used for the other phases also and in this method the switching frequency of the output waveform depends on how fast the current changes between the upper and lower limits this is an overall block diagram of the method which we saw now in hysteresis band control here the reference current ia star is compared with the actual current ia and the error between these two is given to a tolerance band comparator the tolerance band comparator generates pulses for the inverter switches so in this figure the tolerance band comparator for phase a alone is shown so what it does is it adjusts the duty ratio of the pulses so that the actual current ia is maintained within the tolerance band the duty ratio is varied in such a way that the current ia will be maintained within the hysteresis band similarly we'll have comparators for the other two phases it is not shown here for convenience and these pulses will be given to the three phase inverter and from there you can feed it to the motor so that the current of the motor can be controlled to be equal to the reference value i a star so with this we wind up with the fifth module we'll be seeing the sixth module in the coming lectures thank you